I love drawing animals and there are certain creatures that are just so fun to illustrate. One of my favorites has to be the sloth, which is almost like a caricature even in real life. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my entire illustration process in Adobe Illustrator and I will show you why I love to work with the curvature tool. Alright, so this is how I normally start an illustration. I have a sketch that I place into Illustrator. Now, you can create these sketches in Procreate or you can draw on paper and scan it in. But the reason why you should always start from a sketch is because it helps you to capture the essence of a character and add the expression. Like here, we have very simple shapes, but it already has some flow and some shape language in place, having all these curvy round shapes are always good for these cute characters and a sketch can really help to achieve this but you might need to do a couple of rounds so a few sketches quick ones from which you can choose the best one so I try not to stop and just do one sketch I usually do a few of them and each of these usually take around five minutes so it's not that much of a commitment but believe me having a good expressive sketch is the key for a successful illustration all the rest is more like artworking in a way because you can learn the techniques but having a good sketch in the beginning is what's going to be the heart and soul of the whole artwork. So without any further delay let's get started. You can see I have the colors already prepared here so I, again I don't want to waste time on collecting them and I also save them into the swatches. Plus what I'm going to do is to show you just very briefly how the end result is going to look like. So Here's a bit of a sneak peek of what we are going to achieve. And now that we've seen it, let's crack on. You can see there will be some differences from the original sketch. And that's fine again, because this is just a guideline. You can always change things around as you go ahead. But we will go through all of that in more detail. So I'm going to double click on the sketch layer and turn it into a template, which will dim it automatically by 50%. And then I'm going to select this additional layer on top on which I'm going to work. Now, the main tool I will be using is the curvature tool and this is one of the tools in Illustrator that doesn't really get as much love as it deserves. Most people would recommend everyone to use the pen tool and we know that the pen tool works in a way that you click to create straight lines or click and drag to create curved lines and that's great for most cases but if you know that your character or illustration has a lot of round shapes in it then it's probably worth trying the curvature tool which by default draws curves so let me show you how it works it's here in the toolbar and by the way if you don't see it you have to go into the edit toolbar option and you have to make sure you choose from here the advanced toolbar because by default it's set to basic and it might not show this tool so once you see it you can just select it and you can even assign a custom keyboard shortcut to it if you use it often now that I have it selected I'm going to also make sure I don't have a fill color so I press the question mark or forward slash on the keyboard that removes the currently selected color and now I can start drawing with it so when I click I'm just going to start drawing here maybe when I click it creates the first anchor point but already looks slightly different it's not a square it's a circle which already indicates that you're using the curvature tool instead of the pen tool but as soon as I click next time and start moving my mouse you can see how immediately it tries to bend the shape and create a curve so what started off as a straight line now turns into a curve when I click again you can see how nicely it will try to follow the shape I'm creating so this is not a perfect circle, it's a specific curve that I wanted to create here and with these few points I could really closely follow it but once again I'm not trying to be exactly the same or not trying to be exactly recreate my lines, I just use that as a guideline. So let's continue, I'm going to add another point here and then turn another point around there, around there and the belly needs to curve like that and then come up here now at one point I might need to move these points around a bit more 
we'll put one more point up there and now there so you can see that this point here is a little bit sharp what you can always do is to double click on it and that makes sure that both sides are curved up if you double click on a point it turns it back into a sharp corner let me show you it here on the top as well so when I do that you see we can very quickly turn these points into sharp corners or when I double click again on them we can turn them back into round shapes now this is also very useful but what's even more useful is that with the same tool so without changing to any other tools I'm still using the curvature tool I can already start moving these points around a bit and that's what I really love about this tool that I can mold the shape almost like a sculpture I can move things around and find the best point for each of these anchor points that with the pen tool would normally be switching back and forth between the direct selection tool or using uh, shortcuts to move anchor points around, adjust them, and just the handles. There's a lot to worry about when you work with the pen tool. By the way, if you switch to the pen tool, notice how immediately all of these points change to anchor points, the usual square anchor points. And if I click on one of them with the direct selection tool, it will show me also the handles. So that's when it gets more complicated. And if you are new to Illustrator, I would suggest to stick with the curvature tool because it just makes it much easier to work with. Now, a cool thing that you can do is if you feel like there's too many anchor points, you can also delete them by just clicking on one and then press backspace on the keyboard, you can delete it. And here, I feel like that might actually help to create a better round belly for our sloth something like that and maybe even this other one we can delete and then just move that point a bit further down so that is quite a nice shape there here on the top we can also check if we need two of these points or one will be enough but I think two points were necessary there of course the less points you use usually the easier to work with your path but you don't have to be too stingy like when you're working with the pen tool you want to reduce the anchor points and use the least amount you can with the curvature tool I think it's a little bit easier you don't have to really force yourself to use a minimum amount but you can see sometimes less points helps to define the shape better so that's our main shape already in place and I'm not going to add colors just yet because I would like to see what I'm doing instead I'm going to draw all the rest of the shapes so let's do the arm and again I'm going to start with the curvature tool just simply click come down like so here I'm going to double click to make sure that this is a corner point and then I click click and see how it becomes already curves yeah so that's going to work quite nicely we can always move this further to the left later on to make sure that we have a nice curve there at the end but for now I'm just going to keep it here and if you want you can always close the shape even with the pen tool you can just use the pen tool and close up this shape it's good habit not to leave your parts open in illustrator especially if you are planning to sell them on stock sites so it's a good practice to close them in even if it's not really necessary from the visibility point of view but now that we have that in place we can again switch back to the curvature tool and draw in the arm here in the back or lag so we are going to draw this like so again we'll create the first point second and then come down probably around here and then further down somewhere around there now I'm going to move these points around a bit it can go up a bit as well yeah that's cute and then we use the pen tool and just close it off of course you can use the curvature tool for closing it off as well but I just find it easier to do it this way and this is actually a shape we can reuse already by using the selection tool alt click and drag I'm going to duplicate it and just rotate it slightly and maybe make it slightly smaller something like that and you can see already I am changing slightly the original drawing I don't actually want these two legs to overlap so I'm going to create a bit more visibility for the leg in the background 
but we can always tweak this later. That's why I keep all of these shapes separate. Now moving on, I'm going to use again the curvature tool and I'm going to zoom a little bit closer just so we can see the face better. And here I'm going to start by holding down the Option or Alt key on the keyboard because I know that needs to be a corner point. And then I click and click to create the first shape. Again, if I hold down the Alt key here, I can make sure that's also a corner point. And then click, hold down the Alt key again, click, Alt key again, click, Alt key again, click and then click. So you can see again, holding down the Alt key or Option key can save you time when you're working with the curvature tool because it helps you to alternate between corner points and round points. And I love the fact that I can always adjust these points later. So you can see instead of having that point there in the middle, if I move it up here, it actually creates or recreates that shape much better. Also, don't forget that you can use the corner widgets if you switch to the direct selection tool. Any corner points will have a corner widget on them. And then if you have all of them selected at the same time, you can drag these corner widgets in to create round corners. And then these are completely non-destructive, so you can make them big or make them small again and go back into sharp corners. The cool thing is that if you add corner radius on these sharp corners and you switch back to the curvature tool, it will still work. It will just have a bit more points on the curve. So I'm just going to undo that because I think having those sharp corners that are actually good. And even though this drawing, I wanted to make it very round and fluffy, I still like to have sometimes sharp corners. And also in this case, on the arm, I feel like it would be good to have a sharp corner on the elbow. Again, just to have a bit of variety in the shape. So if I zoom a little bit closer here and use the direct selection tool, I can select this shape. And if I double click on this point, that already creates that perfect shape I was looking for. So before and after, you can see that having that sharp corner there creates a bit more interest. And these are the things that you will learn and you develop as a style, whether you prefer to have that variation in shapes and lines, or you prefer to have them more round. It's completely up to you. It's your artistic style that can be defined by even simple things like that. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. All right, so let's move on. I'm going to draw the claws now. Again, for that, I'm going to use the curvature tool and I will actually draw one away from the drawing, something like this, and then at the end like this that. Okay, that looks quite good. Maybe drag this one up a bit or down. Yeah, that's not too bad. If you drag two points too close to each other, it also automatically merges them, which is quite a neat feature. I actually prefer in this case, I think the pen tool. So at this point, I will switch to the pen tool. And with that one, I can select these anchor points and also the handles and just adjust them a little bit further until I'm happy with the curves. Yeah, something like that looks good. Okay, it's always good to have references of the actual animal that you're drawing before you create details like this. 
So it's good to know that they have actually really long uh, claws. But of course, you can exaggerate these things. And for these, because it's a little bit difficult to select them, I'm going to press Shift X, which will turn them into a filled shape. And I will already start using the colors I collected here. So I have the colors for the claws here on the right. And I am going to reduce this in size, zoom a bit closer. Let's see where it was, something around that. Make it a bit smaller. And then Alt click and drag to duplicate. And Alt click and drag again. This middle one can be a bit bigger than the rest. And to make sure that we can see them separately, I have another color edit here. So I use a slightly brighter one for the middle ones. And I'm going to select all three, group them together. Command or Control G, and then Alt or Option, click and drag them here to the back, something like that. Okay. Now you can always reverse this or reflect it, and I think that helps. I'm using the Reflect tool, always the shortcut for it. And all you have to do is to click and drag to reflect the selected object. So that was a quick and easy reuse of the same element. And in general, in Illustrator, you want to work fast and efficiently. So any little time saver like that can help. Now we can draw the clothes for the other leg here. So I'm going to double click inside here, select one of them, copy, double click outside and then paste. I'm going to use the reflect tool and reflect it around. Let's just zoom a bit closer. Here we can place it down something like that, nicely following the shape. Yep, something like that. And then Alt click and drag using the other color for this. Put it behind Command Square brackets. You can push details behind. And then the other one we can make slightly smaller and longer. And then the third one we again twist around, make it slightly smaller something like that. Okay, so if you feel like it's a bit too far, we can always bring it a bit closer. Like so. All right, these clothes we won't see because it's hidden. And then we will have more details for the branch and also details for the fur. We can actually already create the details for the fur now. So I'm going to zoom a little bit closer and I want to have a bit of detail here on the head and also on the back. So what I'm going to use for this is again the curvature tool. And what I do is I'm going to double click on this point, then click and click, double click on the top, come down and click twice, double click again, and then we can click and hold down the Alt key to make sure that is a corner point. Click again. And two of them I think will be enough, but maybe we can do a third one. So again, click, Alt click, click and click. And then here at the end, we can just double click and click at the end. So there we have a little detail, which we can always refine. So if I select this and use the curvature tool, if I feel like I need to refine it, I can move these points around slightly smaller at the end. I think that looks quite nice. And then we will be able to use that at the bottom as well. We just have to Alt click and drag, maybe flip it around. Yep. And maybe make it a bit bigger here. So it's not like a tail, but you can consider it the tail as well. It's more like a detail on the back just to make it a bit more fluffy and furry. Instead of adding a lot of fur detail, sometimes less is more and you just indicate subtle details like these will already help. So now it's time to add the facial expression and the details on the face. So I changed my mind. I'm, I'm actually going to create an open eye uh, version for the sloth. So if you remember seeing the example, we will create more like that, something like that. So uh, let's just start with the mouth. I'm going to keep uh, the layers the way I had them. So I'm going to use again the curvature tool, click, click and click. 
as simple as that and then shift x to swap the fill color to a stroke color and i'm going to use a darker color for the stroke by the way when you have the fill color on top even though it's empty in case you want to change the color of your stroke just press x on the keyboard so you can swap which color is highlighted and then what whatever color you select will be applied to that attribute so now that we have that in place i can increase the stroke size maybe to one millimeters and then i would use a width profile probably this one for the mouth now we can always increase this further if we want to make it thicker but i think the one millimeter for now will work and then let's draw the nose now for the nose i'm going to use again the curvature tool just to stick with the theme i'm going to start drawing here on the left here at the bottom i double click i want to keep that one sharp and then just another line here on the top again you can see i'm trying to mix these round shapes with some sharp angles again just to go with that variety that we started there at the bottom and i'm going to for now just keep it as is and probably color this with the dark same dark color what i used on the mouth so now that we have these in place i'm going to draw one of the eyes so for the eyes i'm going to start with the circle so just use the ellipse tool and click and drag i can even hold down the shift key if i want to make it perfect circle and then i am going to use a bright color for it for now and then i am going to add the eyelid for which i'm going to use again the curvature tool so double click double click and then click click and click shift x swap the colors around remove the stroke and then with the curvature tool we can refine the shape something like that that looks all right another circle for the iris and then we just need a little reflection another circle which is going to be white fill and no stroke okay it's getting there the only thing i would like to change is to make sure that the colors are slightly different so this one can be a darker brown uh, or maybe the eyelid can be less dark than that and just put it all the way on the top yes that's that's a bit better but uh, to have a look at the original drawing that i did you can see if you add a bit of variety in the shapes instead of keeping them completely perfect like this circle it already gets a bit more interesting so what i would do in this case is to select this shape and then use the curvature tool select that point and just push it up or push it slightly to the side maybe this point can come down a little bit as well and you already start to have a bit more irregular shape the same thing goes here to the top if we want to push things out a bit or bring things down we can start molding the shape again that's the best way of putting what this actually means what we are doing here eyes are very important part of an illustration on a character because they are the ones that define the look and the expression so it's very expressive in a way so look at this if i start moving things around like these two details if i move further to the right or left it already makes it look like the character is looking in a direction and not uh, staring at us but again with the eyelids if i remove the eyelid it will look very excited and happy while with the eyelid zone it looks more sleepy and that i think works well with the sloth character so for now i'm going to just keep things like as they are maybe just this reflection point i will move slightly to the right i think that looks a bit better so i'm going to select all of them together all of these details command or control g and then o for reflect tool and uh, actually let's click in here in the middle click and drag with the reflect tool shift and alt or option key held down maybe in this case just the option key is enough to make sure while we are creating the reflection we are also duplicating so we want to keep the original there adding the alt or option key while using the reflect tool creates a duplicate cool and that first point that i added was the center of symmetry okay let me zoom back and i think we are 
pretty much ready with all the details necessary for the sloth. Now it might not look great so far, but once I add all the colors, you will see how it looks. So let me just start with the sloth, the main detail. Uh, actually, I'm going to start with the smaller ones. So this one will be bright. Then this one here will be the uh, medium brown and I'm going to keep removing the strokes as well. So you will see me removing the strokes as I go ahead. So the main shape now we can do, and that can be again, this medium brown uh, on the fill color like that. And then these will be darker. So I'm just going to turn them into this darker color darker brown and use command shift or control shift square bracket to move them in the background and then I think these need to be changed in color I can even use the eyedropper now I is the shortcut for that and that is pretty much it now if I turn off this and I see the sketch there I don't have a detail for the belly but normally sloths have a brighter fur detail on their belly similar to their face so that would be good to use and also especially to separate the legs in the back from the front so the body and the legs in the back can be separated much better that way so what I'm going to do is to use the curvature tool again and I'm going to start drawing outside and then come down draw this shape something like that Okay, something like that. I'm going to set it to the brighter color. And here comes a very useful tip. If you select these two shapes, so the main shape that uh, we have in the background and the shape we just created, by using the shift key, you select both of them and then use the shape builder tool and holding down the alt or option key, you can remove the excess part. So that way you end up having something like that. Now I'm going to move some details around slightly like this hand can come a little bit closer this way and I can also probably use the curvature tool just to adjust this shape slightly around like that. I think that that works. Let's have a look at my original drawing. Yeah, it was quite similar. It's never going to be exactly the same. Each time I would draw this, it will be slightly different. But another useful technique with the same tool, the Shape Builder tool, I can create shadows. And at this point, I'm going to turn off the sketch because it's not really important anymore. And I'm going to use this shape that we created for the hand and duplicate it, use the darker color, send it behind the other shape and rotate it around slightly until it gets close to the corner point, something like that, and then select the detail behind it. So shift click on the detail behind it. And then using the shape builder tool, we can again get rid of the excess detail, something like that. And then even here on this side, we can select the shape and use the eraser tool and just delete what's not necessary from it. Now, if I want to move the hand or the lag. I'm just going to adjust this claw a little bit. Just have a better shape like that. I'm going to select these, group them together and I can start move them around by looking at the whole shape. I can include also the shadow in the selection. But if I start moving that around after it was cut into place, it might not work as well, but I think it's actually fine the way it is. I, I like the fact that there is a sharp corner here. So just showing it to you, if I move this all the way up there, it creates a continuous shape, but I actually like that slight break in there on the left. Okay, so we have a little shadow there, but I would like to have the same shadow here for the fur. So I am going to set this up in the place I want it and then well, to be honest, in this case, it would be easier if we just draw this in. So in these cases, sometimes I would switch to the outline view, command or control Y, and then I can just draw with the pen tool in this case, draw from this point here, maybe, yeah, around from there to there. 
a simple triangle like this. Command and control Y to go back, set this up to the shadow color, send it behind. So use the command square bracket to send it behind. And once it finds its place, we can shift click, select these two shapes. So select that and the shape behind it. I think it is already selected. Yes. And then use the shape builder tool and holding down the alt key or option key, you can delete the excess detail there. Okay. So that's just a subtle little shading there, which helps us to see it's not part of the silhouette. It's actually coming out from that plane. Okay, now the same we could repeat here at the bottom, but I think it looks fine for now. Next thing would be the branch, but that's not as exciting to draw. So I'm going to just cheat a bit and bring it in from the original drawing. And notice that I have created an out of bounds effect as well. So we have the little uh, bounding box, the circle bounding circle in this case, and we have the branch and the hand coming out of it. So that tiny little detail adds also depth, even though we don't have any texture or shading, it still creates a sense of depth. So I think that is working quite well. And one last little detail here for the branch, since we brought it in, would be to add a little bit of shading there. This one, I can even use the blob brush tool for this. I'm going to use a darker color, probably, I don't know, maybe this color here. I'm just going to paint over these parts here. And actually, I will have to use the darker color than that, or maybe this color will work um, because otherwise it clashes with the lag. The good thing about the blob brush tool is that it extends the details very quickly. So if I just draw over here as well, it just keeps creating one single shape instead of multiple shapes. Now these claws can come on top, just move them up a bit. That shape can come up as well slightly. Okay, we just want to make sure that it feels like it's holding onto that branch. And then this one again can come on top. And all we have to do at the end is to make sure that this is now only visible on top of the branch. So we can use the shape builder tool and then just chop these bits off like so. So when we zoom back, we can see how that would work. And I think that just adds again, just a little bit more depth to the illustration. So we could go and refine this further, but if we look at the sketch and the illustration, it looks very similar. And with the background, I think it works really well. Once again, we can compare to my other drawing, which I created. I spent a bit more time on refining the expression and the head, but I think it works quite well already. We can always go back and that's the good thing again about the tool that we use, the curvature tool, that if you feel like we need to adjust any of these shapes, we can easily do that. We can make the head slightly bigger and we could go on and refine this very quickly and easily if we feel like we need it. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.